In this question, it says that a researcher finds that of 1,000 people who said that they attend a religious service at least once a week, 31 stopped to help a person with car trouble. Of 1,200 people interviewed who had not attended a religious service at least once a month, 22 stopped to help a person with car trouble. At the 0.05 significance level, we want to test the claim that the two proportions are equal. So we're going to start by writing our null and alternative hypotheses. So I write H0 and then H1. For the null hypothesis, H0, we're testing the claim that the two proportions are equal. So I'm going to say that proportion 1 is equal to proportion 2. And that would make the alternative hypothesis a statement that they are not equal because there's no indication of one being larger than the other. So my claim is the null hypothesis. Now, the next thing to do is to decide what kind of test to do. Because we have two proportions, we're comparing two proportions, so we're going to do a two-prop z-test. And this is number six in your calculator. So when I go to do that, I'm going to put in the information from the problem. So I start with x1, and that is the number of people that we started off with, the 31 people who stopped to help the person. And N1, which is the sample size, is 1,000. Then we have X2, and that's the number of people who did not re attend the religious service, that's 22. And N2 is the number in that sample, and that is 1,200. So now we're going to put in the alternative hypothesis, and that is that P1 is not equal to P2. So I've put that all into my calculator, and you can choose calculate or draw. And the results that we get are the test statistic, and we round that to two decimal places. So that is Z equals 1.93. And the p-value is 0 0.0537. Okay, so that's the information from the calculator that I needed. Now I'm going to compare my p-value to the significance level alpha. And in this problem, alpha is equal to 0.05. So since the p-value is larger than alpha, that means that I'm going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. So when I write my conclusion, because the claim was the null hypothesis, I use the word reject in my statement. So I'm going to say, there is not sufficient evidence to reject, because we said fail to reject the null hypothesis. So there is not sufficient evidence to reject the claim which was the null hypothesis, that the two proportions are equal.
And that's how you do that problem.